Cook Inlet is located on the coast of South Central Alaska at latitude 62 degrees north. It connects with the Gulf of Alaska. Starting from the south, we have the towns of Homer, Kenai, and Anchorage. On the left bank are three active volcanoes, Mount St. Augustine, Mount Iliamna, and Mount Redoubt. The inlet is some 200 miles long. The narrow region two-thirds of the way up the inlet, just to the north of Kenai, is the Forelands region. To compute the M2 tide of the region, the inlet was schematized by a rectangular grid. The grid contains an area 80 miles by 200 miles. An unusual feature of this grid is its unequal spacing. This was utilized to give more detail in the region of the Forelands. Tide heights were specified along the entrance to the Gulf of Alaska, and currents normal to the solid boundaries were set equal to zero. Tide height and currents throughout the region were calculated on a high-speed computer. The heights are displayed in perspective form from the viewpoint of an observer looking in the direction of the arrow. The flat part that surrounds most of the inlet represents land. The city of Anchorage is at the top, and the Gulf of Alaska is out of the picture at the lower right. The entrance to the Gulf is about 50 miles wide. The forelands, the narrow region two-thirds of the way up the inlet, is 10 miles wide. The hands of the clock indicate the time in lunar hours after high water at Anchorage. Low water at Anchorage thus occurs at 6 o'clock. At 7 o'clock, look for the start of the five-hour progression of the crest of the wave from the entrance to the end of the inlet. Note also the slope of the surface across the inlet and the behavior of the wave in the forelands region. High water occurs at Anchorage at 12 o'clock and at 1 o'clock, low water occurs at the entrance. Currents now ebb throughout the inlet. The Coriolis effect causes the sea surface to slope downwards from left to right. The sea surface, already below mean sea level on the left, is even further below mean sea level on the right. Maximum flood currents at the entrance occur at 6 o'clock, one hour before high water at the entrance. Currents now flood throughout the inlet. This time, the Coriolis effect causes the sea surface to slope upwards from left to right. The sea surface, now above mean sea level on the left, is even higher on the right. The combination of the ebb and flood situations causes the tidal range to be significantly greater on the right of Cook Inlet than on the left. The next three cycles show contours of equal tide height in centimeters superimposed on current vectors. The length of each vector is proportional to the speed of the current and it points in the direction of the current. Note the timing of the current maxima and the angles between the contours and the current vectors. Although difficult to visualize the sea surface, it helps to remember that at Anchorage, low water occurs at 6 o'clock and high water at 12 o'clock. Maximum flood at the entrance occurs some six hours before high water at Anchorage. This is about one hour before local high water. Maximum flood in Upper Cook Inlet occurs three to four hours before high water at Anchorage. This indicates that the tide changes from being of standing wave type at Anchorage to nearly traveling wave type at the entrance. It is a consequence of the need to transport energy into the inlet to replace that lost to friction. In Upper Cook Inlet, as the ebb begins, the contour lines no longer lie directly across the inlet. This is a result of the Coriolis effect. 
At about 3 o'clock, the contour lines run along the inlet axis as maximum ebb occurs. The sea surface in Upper Cook Inlet was then passing through mean sea level. As the currents decrease and become zero near the time of low water at Anchorage, the contour lines again lie across the inlet. The greatest currents in Cook Inlet occur between the forelands and reach maximum flood three to four hours before high water at Anchorage. The values range between five and one half knots at neap tides and ten and one half knots at spring tides. A final feature to note is the counterclockwise rotation of the contour lines in Lower Cook Inlet. This is again a consequence of the Coriolis effect. The film was produced at the National Center for Atmospheric Research at Boulder, Colorado and was made possible only through the use of one of the fastest computers then available, a CDC 7600. Each tidal cycle is divided up into 1440 intervals, so that the real time between each frame is half a lunar minute. For the first two cycles, at each time step, the height field is calculated and the perspective view computed. This information is then plotted on a cathode ray tube exposed to a 35 millimeter black and white film. For the last three cycles, at each time step, contours are computed and photographed. Then the vectors are computed and photographed. Finally, a 35 millimeter color film is made from the black and white film.